Hey guys, Firelady here, and welcome to another What If. This What If, if you can't tell by the title or the thumbnail, is about Garagurda's uh, Reflect. I got this idea actually when I first listened to this song. I got the idea to write this after the one I did with Takamori. And I've been finalizing the story. I finally finished it. <laughs> Enough fooling around. Let's get right into it. So we start off on a beach. The Hollow Live EN girls are all at the beach, just hanging out. Callie's gonna be get, be grilling. Uh, Ina's just out there doing some drawings, reading a book. Kiara wants Callie to join her. Swimming, but obviously Callie's just like, nah, I'm not gonna do that. Callie actually asks Gerda if she can catch some fish for her. And Gerda obviously is like, heck yeah, I'll do that. And goes to, straight to the water. Watson, she's just hanging out, sunbathing. And so it's Kiara because, you know, Callie doesn't wanna play with her. After a while, a Gerda comes out of the sea with a bunch of fish in hand. After thanking her, Gerda goes off on this little tangent saying that it's been so long since she's been at the sea and that it just feels so great just to be over there, just to swim around there again. It's basically been a millennium since she's done that. After saying all that, Gerda just stares out into the sea for a while. It is then interrupted by Amelia who just squares her with a water gun. Gerda, accepting Ames' challenge, tries to go after her, but, but Ina tosses Gerda a water gun to use against Ame. Ina also joins uh, Gerda to take down Ame, which Ame is claim claiming is unfair. And so those three just have this big water gun fight while Callie's preparing the uh, fish to grill. Around sunset, the girls just got through eating, just commenting on how they and how it was a great day that they had. Uh, Ame is noticing Gerda still staring out into the sea, and she noticed it while Gerda was eating as well. So by the next day, when uh, everyone's just gonna do some do things on her own, you know, Kiara basically convinced Callie to basically go on a date with her. Ame and Ina were just gonna do some window shopping, asking Gerda if they want to come. Gerda says no and just. Decides to stay in the hotel room. While out window shopping, Ame and Ina start talking about a girl that just seems a little distant since yesterday. Ina kind of suggests that it may be because she's homesick. She did say she hasn't been in the sea for like, for like millenniums. Ame agrees with that theory because it makes the most sense. So they call Kali and Kiara to talk about their plan to help hero Gura. By the time they get back to the hotel room, Gura is just there basically playing on the laptop, trying to distract herself. Uh, everyone comes to Gura and just gives Gura a present. Each of these presents is something that is related to Atlantic. Believing that this is will help cure Gura because she's homesick, Gura is surprised and shocked that everyone got these things for her. It actually does cheer up Gura the moment that she kind of starts tearing up a bit. Just thanks them all so much. A few weeks later, Ame is in her office. Right? She gets a call from the police asking her to help them with an investigation that is happening at a noodle shop. When Ame gets there, she didn't need to look at anything else. It is blood everywhere and people are seen to be bitten basically almost in half or huge chunks is missing them and whatnot. But the thing that Ame notices the most is that these are shark bites. The cops are focusing on bites itself saying like, how could this have happened and whatnot? But Ame only knows one person that could be and she doesn't want to believe it. One of the officers tells uh, Ame that there's a trail of blood basically leading to an alley. Ame, with her detective skill, can tell that this blood trail is from somebody that is running away. She follows this trail and sees that not only does there a spot where it seems that the person who had this stops, but also a handprint on brick wall. Ame, using this and using one of the tools that she would have, identifies fingerprint within the blood. And because Ame has records of these fingerprints from her friends, she knows that this is Gura. She doesn't believe it, but the evidence says that this is Gura. She looks around this alley and sees two more bodies in the same mutilated way as those in the ramen shop and another trail of blood. Ame follows it which blood trail leads to the ocean. Ame still doesn't want to believe that this is Gura's doing so Ame quickly runs over to Gura's house. She starts banging on the door but nobody's answering. Ame who has a spare key uses it and goes inside Gura's apartment. What she sees shocks Ame. It is her home just destroyed but the only thing intact are stuff related to Atlanta. Basically this is confirming that this is Gura just doing all, everything that's about this is Gura's doing. Ame goes back to her office and takes out one of the capsules that she gotten from one of the timelines that she traveled through. The capsule holds a basically a, a, an advanced a scuba diving suit which can basically let you freely move around the ocean. Think about it like the Iron Man suit, but it's made for underwater exploration. Using this suit, Ame goes into the ocean to look for Gura. After about a week of looking, Gura ends up finding Ame and attacks her. Ame is surprised that Gura found her. She tries to talk to her, but nothing is getting through to her. And Gura just keeps attacking Ame. She doesn't know why. 
She's trying to get the girl, but nothing's working. Having no other choice, she goes to her other friends and asks them for help. Kiara couldn't get through to Gura, almost got killed because of it. Kali, Kali knows that Gura's souls isn't the same. That's all she can get out of this. And Ina gets the most information by going down there due to the Ancient One's power. Because of the Ancient Ones, Ina was able to find out that basically Gura's humanity is gone. That the uh, girl that was their friend is long gone, it's basically dead. Ame, who's just in shock by seeing this, takes a few days for this information to sink into Ame, but afterwards she immediately uses her time traveling stopwatch that she has and goes back to before this incident happened. When Ame arrives in that time, she immediately goes to Gura's house, but is stopped by Kali. Kali, get out of my way! Amelia, you know you shouldn't have done that. Kali, come on, this is to save Gura! You can't stop me from doing this. I know I can't, but I can't keep covering for you either, Ame. Sooner or later, you're gonna have to pay the price for misuse of time travel. That's fine, I don't care! I just let me go save Gura! Meanwhile, Gura is just in her house, basically trying to uh, console herself. She's been hearing voices in her head the entire time. That's basically telling her that she's a disappointment of a shark and that the life that she's living right, here, right now is a lie. Gura just doesn't want to hear it right now. She is scared. She doesn't know what to do. She wants to talk to her friends, but this voice is also telling her that nobody will ever understand her. She is alone. So, Gura is trying to do whatever it takes to shut this voice up, and that it ends up destroying her own apartment. The voice does actually stop talking for a while. Gura believing that this worked. She notices that she destroyed her apartment, and it just, but she's too tired to fix it up. Join her apartment did make her hungry, so she decides to go to a ramen shop. By the time Amelia gets to the girl's apartment, it is already too late because she sees that her apartment is destroyed. Amelia's next location is the ramen shop. On the way to that ramen shop, Amelia calls Ina to ask her to do something. When the girl arrives at the ramen shop, she orders her favorite dish. She's just enjoying the food when that voice comes back into her head, telling her that the shrimp that is being used is just an imitation of things that she gotten at the sea and stuff like that messing with Gura's mind. Gura again is panicking again because she thought she shut this voice in her head up. Uh, one of the uh, patrons there is getting annoyed with Gura. He wants her to shut up but the owner who knows Gura very well is trying to quiet down this guy but this guy isn't listening at all. He grabs onto Gura which basically sends the Gura into a shark frenzy and just attacks this guy. The girl, who is still in a shark frenzy, just start going after everybody in that shop. Once Gura calms down, she looks at her surroundings and sees what she has done. Terrified of herself, Gura runs away. Ame arrives at the ramen shop and once again sees that she is late. But she notices the trail of blood and it starts to follow that. When Gura arrives in that alley, she's trying to calm herself down, but she's terrified of herself now, especially because she went into a shark frenzy. And this voice is now stronger in her, telling her that this is who Gura really is. She's just a shark and nothing else. Gura is so terrified of herself that when these two guys shows up to just basically try to take advantage of Gura, they try to talk to her, but Gura isn't paying attention. She's trying to calm herself down. One of the guys tries to grab Gura, but again, Gura goes into another shark frenzy and ends up killing these guys as well. When Gura comes out again, she notices what she does. Again, terrified of herself, the voice is almost completely in control. The voice in Gura's head telling her that there is a way to stop this is to go to Atlanta and be the shark that you truly are and let her take over. Gura's about to let that happen when she hears Ame's voice. She turns around and sees Ame who is been sweating and out of breath. Ame's even chasing Gura and just caught up to her before Gura just left and basically lost her humanity. Ame is the only person that right now Gura can hear besides the voice in her head. A girl who has some sense of control of herself since hearing Ame's voice tells Ame to leave her alone. That she doesn't want to hurt her like she did this. Ame is not taking no for an answer. She knows what is happening and she will help Gura. Gura is just too terrified of herself and terrified for Ame's safety. She doesn't listen. When Ame puts a hand on her, Gura goes to another shark frenzy. Start by cutting Ame's arm. Ame screams in pain, then reaches for one of her uh, syringe and injects Gura. Gura ends up going to sleep. Ame, after taking a look at the damage Gura's done, had noticed that Gura's teeth mark had basically tore open her arm and dislocated her shoulder. Ame tries to patch herself up, but because of how big the wound is, she won't be able to properly uh, wrap this up by herself. So, she calls Ina and tells her that she sedated Gura and that she needs to get where they are now. And by the time, uh, uh, I don't know what they're called, I think they're called Taco. By the time uh, Taco comes in, Ame lets herself passes out because 
she knows that she's in safe hands now. Now, I'm going to take a liberty with the uh, first one's, with the ancient one's power, because I don't exactly know what the, the powers of the ancient one. Uh, Taco ends up teleporting both Gura and Ame to Ina. Ina was waiting there with both Kali and Kiara, because Ina told Kiara uh, what was going on. Kali, along with Kiara and Ina, relocates her shoulder, patches her arm up, and, and yeah, lets Ame rest up. Again, with the first one's power, they're able to uh, basically put Gura in a little uh, barrier, similar to that in Shira, how they imprisoned a Shadow Weaver and Bright Moon. When Gura wakes up, she's confused at where she's at. Ina tells Gura that she's at her house, that this was Ame's idea, and that they're going to talk to Gura and try to snap her out what is on what is going on with her mind. This goes on for two months, but it is slowly working, and everyone is seeing that this is working. Ame has uh, recovered and has been doing other jobs. Has let the uh, police know what was happening. Not exactly what was happening, but what caused the murders that happened. After about a few more weeks after the voice has stopped, it is seen that they finally got through to Gura. And that Gura is finally free from whatever it is that is basically haunting her or whatever. It seems like everything's finally going to be under control. Everything's finally back to normal. That is until, out of nowhere, the voice is just the only thing Gura's here. And it just says... So you think that's all, huh? You think that talking to your friends is just gonna make me go away? You think I'm just gonna leave like it's nothing? But that girl goes to another shark frenzy. One of the strongest ones that she had ever since this boy started talking to her. Now going on full shark instinct, Gura is just trying to get to the ocean right now. And it's just bypassing anything and everyone. Even the magic that Ina is using from the ancient ones. Ame eventually gets to Gura using one of the devices from one of the timelines she's traveled through able to pin down Gura and stop her, followed by everyone else who is just trying to hold Gura down, trying to contain her. Gura, who is still trying to battle this thing in her mind, is just trying to get it to shut up and just let her go. But ultimately, it just seems that the only way to stop this is to accept it, but not let it take over. She comes to this conclusion after this voice is telling her that no matter who Gura is trying to be, who she wants to be, who she's trying to fool, that girl will always be a shark and that's all she can ever be. Gura, after taking this into uh, mind, just like, you're right, I am a shark, but it doesn't mean I'm a monster like you. I'm a shark who has these friends, who can be what I want to be, not what you say I am. I'm Gara Gura, I am a shark, which ultimately does end up working. The voice still goes on in her head, but, you know, it's not as strong as it is. Gura has accepted that, yes, she is a shark, that's, that's all she'll ever be, but not a monster. Gura has accepted this part of her that she may have been ashamed of or didn't want to be anymore. But she's completely fine with it. She may not be the shark that she was be when she was in Atlanta. But she believes that she has something better. And Gura wholeheartedly believes this and is glad that she does. And that will be it. I am sorry if this ending seems a little bit different. If this ending seems weird. Trust me, it, when I'm recording this. Uh, but anyway, yeah. There is actually a different, uh, I guess, confrontation. An alternate confrontation between Gura and this version of her in her mind. So if you want to see that, uh, go ahead and let me know down in the comments. And go ahead and let me know down in the comments below. But anyway, yeah. Fireblade here and I will see you later. Whatever I make. Bye.